Okay, so in this video I'll talk about a pretty interesting technique that you can use to um, sum up certain series called a Roots of Unity filter. And as the name suggests, um, what you do is you have a certain series that you start with, A0, A1, A2, and so on. And um, you try and filter out certain elements from that and add those up while ignoring the rest. And as the name also suggests, you use the Roots of Unity in um, some way. So what the idea is, is say you have some power series or some series expansion, um, f of z is equal to a0 plus a1z plus a2z squared plus so on and so forth. Um, then what you want to do is for some number n, you want to find the sum of a0 plus an plus a2n plus a3n and so on. So you want to take um, the sum of all of the coefficients where n divides k. So for example, if n is equal to 4, then what you want to look at is um, the sum of a0 plus a4 plus a8 and so on, and you ignore all the other terms. Um, so uh, what we can do is we can actually uh, find something that works for each of the monomials and um, add those up with coefficients to get the formula for a general series. So let's fix a monomial. Let's say that we have z to the power of k and we want to try and find um, some way so that we can um, turn this into 1 if uh, k is a multiple of n and turn this into 0 if k is not a multiple of n. Um, so uh, the idea is that we're going to use the roots of unity. So the roots of unity are the complex numbers uh, e to the i, 2 pi i, k, uh, let's not use k again, 2 pi i, um, m over n, where m is in the set 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 1, and these are the numbers that satisfy, um, z to the power of n is equal to 1, so they're the nth roots of unity, which means that um, if you take them to the power of n, they evaluate to unity, which is 1. Um, so what we can look at is first uh, consider the case where n divides k. And what we're going to do is take the sum over all roots of unity. So I'll just abbreviate that as e to the power of n equals 1. So this is just saying that um, you take the sum uh, over all e to the 2 pi i m over n. And let's look at z to the power of a n. So a is just some integer. So this is just saying that we're going to consider k as being multiple of n. So this we can rewrite as being the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1 of z to the power of n, all that to the power of a. But we know that uh, for the roots of unity, or actually I'll rewrite z as e to the 2 pi i m over n to the power of n, and that raised to the power of a. So we're evaluating z at these values and um, raising each of those to the power of n, and then raising each of those to the power of a. And so we uh, said that all of these values satisfy that z to the power of n is equal to 1. So this is just the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1 of 1 to the power of a. Now, 1 to the power of anything is just 1, and a is just positive or 0 integer. And so this would just be summing up 1 n times because you start off at 0 and go up to n minus 1. And so this is just equal to n. So what that means is that if you take 1 over n times the sum, then this will be 1 over n there, 1 over n there, and this becomes n over n, which is 1. So um, what the roots of unity filter is, is essentially you plug in all the roots of unity for your z, add them all up, and then divide by n. So for example, if you take z to the power of 8, and you look at 1 to the power of 8 plus i to the power of 8 plus uh, negative 1 to the power of 8 plus negative i to the power of 8, and divide that by 4. Um, so 1i, negative 1, and negative i are the four roots of unity because they're all the numbers where if you take them to the power of 4, they equal 1. And we raise them to the power of 8, which is obviously a multiple of 4. And we see that each of these guys is going to be equal to 1. So this is going to be equal to 1, which uh, is essentially saying that 8 is a multiple of 4. So now we want to show that if um, k is not a multiple of n, then um, this sum evaluates to 0. So that's saying that this 
is equal to zero if n does not divide k. So the easiest way to do this, in my opinion, is uh, through something that's sort of like uh, group theoretic. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take a function phi of k, and that goes from the integers modulo n uh, to complex numbers. And this essentially is phi k a uh, is equal to e to the power of 2 pi i k a uh, over n. So what you're doing is you're taking uh, e to the power of 2 pi i k over n and raising that to the power of a. And that's what your function phi sub k of a is. And a is some number in um, z mod nz. You just consider it as some integer, but because um, e to the power of 2 pi i n k n over n is equal to 1, um, this can be considered as a function um, from the integers modulo n to the complex uh, multiplicative numbers. Now this is um, a group homomorphism, so if you don't know what that is, that just basically means that phi sub k of a plus b is equal to phi sub k of a times phi sub k of b. So um, this is pretty easy to verify, and uh, you can try that if you don't believe me. Um, so now, because we assumed that um, n does not divide k, that means that um, when we write this out explicitly, we can write this out as 1 over n times the sum from n equals 0 to n minus 1 of um, e to the power of 2 pi i k over n to the power of m. But then um, this expression over here is just equal to 1 over n times the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1 of phi sub k of m. And so what we can do now is we can look at what is phi sub k of 1. That's an awful phi. Phi sub k of 1. This is equal to e to the power of 2 pi i k over n. And because n is not a factor of k, this is obviously not equal to 1. Um, so what that means is we can um, take each of these numbers and rewrite this sum up here as being 1 over n times the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1 of phi sub k of m minus 1 plus 1. But now we can use this property over here to rewrite this as being phi sub k of m minus 1 times phi sub k of 1. And this is still the sum 1 over n. And so now we're taking the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1, right? And this is where it's useful to think of this as being a function over um, the uh, integers mod n instead of uh, just being integers. Uh, because your original sum, uh, this one over here, is taking the sum over m is 0, 1, 2, all the way up to n minus 1. But now down here, uh, you're subtracting 1 from each of them. So this is m minus 1, goes from negative 1, 0, 1, all the way up to n minus 2. However, um, because this is the same as n minus 1 mod n, and that's essentially saying that uh, phi sub k of negative 1 is equal to phi sub k of n minus 1, which is uh, both of them are equal to e to the power of 2 pi i, negative 2 pi i k over n. Um, so because these two are equal, you can change this uh, without changing anything to be n minus 1, and then you realize that these two sets are exactly the same thing. So what that means is that you can re-index this to rewrite this as 1 over n times the sum from m equals 0 to n minus 1 of phi sub k of m times phi sub k of 1. So what we did here is just uh, re-index this. If you want to, you can call this like a new variable k, and k is equal to m minus 1, and then k ranges from negative 1 to n minus 2. But because n minus uh, or k equals negative 1 to n minus 2, but because negative 1 is the same thing as n minus 1, um, for this, uh, what we're looking at, uh, this is uh, valid to just go from 0 to n minus 1. Um, so now what we have is uh, this side we have some sum, and this side we have the same exact sum uh, times some number. 
So what we can do is we can move this to the other side and rewrite this as being, let's erase this over here, uh, 1 over n times the sum, m equals 0 to n minus 1, uh, it's in k m times the quantity 1 minus 5 sub k 1 is equal to 0. So what I did is I took this, subtracted it all in here, and then I factored out this expression, uh, which is what we're trying to prove is equal to 0 if n is uh, not a factor of k. And we said that if n is not a factor of k, then um, 5 sub k of 1, which is this term over here, is not equal to 1. So this guy is obviously not equal to 0. But because you have something times something that's non-zero is equal to zero, that means that this guy over here must be equal to zero. And this guy over here is the sum over the roots of unity of z to the power of k, and n does not divide k. So showing uh, through this method that this sum is equal to zero is the same thing as showing that uh, this is equal to zero. Uh, okay, so uh, just a little remark. This also works over arbitrary finite groups where if you have a group homomorphism from your finite group to the multiplicative complex numbers, and then you take the sum over all of the elements in your original group, um, and you take all the sum of their images, assuming that your group homomorphism is not trivial, so that means like not every element gets sent to one, um, your uh, a sum that sort of looks like this, one over the size of your group times the sum over all of your elements um, times your group homomorphism, uh, is going to be equal to zero. And if it is um, a trivial homomorphism, then this expression would be one. And I think uh, even if it's not finite, uh, if it's continuous and you have an integral, as long as the integral converges and um, you replace one over n by one over um, the integral over your, like the size of your group, uh, then this expression will also be equal to one. So anyways, uh, that was a roundabout saying, way of saying that we have just proven this expression is going to be equal to 1 if n is a factor of k and 0 if n is not a factor of k. Or in other words, this is the indicator function um, of n is a factor of k. Uh, so we can look at this and sort of convert it to a statement about these general polynomials. So notice that if we um, take the sum of f of z over all roots of unity, uh, t to the n equals 1, and we divide by 1 over n, and we're fixing the value of n, then this will be equal to the sum of a0 plus a1z plus a2z squared, plus so on and so forth, over all roots of unity z to the n is equal to 1, and this will just be 1 over n times the sum of a0 plus 1 over n times the sum of a1z plus 1 over n times the sum of a2z squared, and uh, so on and so forth. Because the um, summation is linear, actually I should rewrite this as uh, a sub 1 times 1 over n sum of z, and this one is a sub 2 times 1 over n, sum of 1 over z squared, where each of these sums are taken over uh, the roots of unity. So because uh, the sum is linear, that just means that we can um, separate out the sum and distribute it out to each of the guys. And because um, the coefficients are all independent of z, we can pull the coefficient out of the sum. And so we have this sort of indicator function on each of our monomials um, in there. So we know that each of these is equal to 1 if k is a multiple of n and is equal to 0 if k is not a multiple of n. So what that means is that this is just going to be equal to uh, a0 plus a n plus a2 n plus a3 n and so on and so forth. So um, yeah, so essentially what we did was we just um, took uh, this series, and then apply this indicator function to it, which is the sum over all roots of unity times 1 over n, and we were able to isolate uh, the multiples of n like we wanted. So the way to use this is, uh, say you have some function, and you want to isolate like every nth step, uh, sometimes in like probability sort of problems that uh, is useful, like say you want to calculate what's the probability that something happens 
um, after n tries or after two n tries or after three n tries, then you can use this. Or say you have some interesting sum um, that you want to evaluate, maybe you can construct a function f of z um, such that the coefficients, every nth coefficient is a term in your series, and then you can use this function to evaluate what your series uh, becomes. Uh, so maybe something that you can try is take the sum over um, all, uh, let's say, 3 divides k of 7 uh, choose k. So this will be like 7 choose 0 plus 7 choose 3 plus 7 choose 6. And uh, so you can try to evaluate this, and I think it is to look at the function x plus 1 to the power of 7. Uh, so now, um, a couple more things uh, that you could try out to prove on your own, uh, which are some easy things that follow up from this, is that um, this not only works for positive series, but if you have uh, some terms with negative coefficients, then it still works. So for example, let's say that you have f of z is equal to a negative 2, z to the power of negative 2, plus a negative 1, z to the power of negative 1, plus a0, plus a1 to z, and so on and so forth. And let's say you apply this trick when you look at n equals 2. So that'll be 1 half f of uh, 1 plus f of negative 1, because those are the square roots of unity. Um, and you can evaluate this out, and this will turn out to be a to negative 2, plus a0, plus a2, and so on. And if you have a minus 4 in the series, then that'll also work. a minus 6 in the series, that'll also work. So essentially, um, the point is that it, your coefficients and your exponents don't always have to be positive. So long as you have some series that converges um, over your complex roots of unity, uh, you can apply the same sort of trick to isolate those terms. And another thing that you can do is you can look at everything that is congruent to some value, say, a mod n. So say that instead of wanting to find uh, a0 plus a4 plus a8, you wanted to look for um, a1 plus a5 plus a9, and so on. So another thing that you can prove is that you can take the sum over all roots of unity again and divide by n. And if you put z to the power of minus a, f of z, then um, this will be all of your things which are of, let's say, k is congruent to a mod n of a sub k. So for example, um, if you were to put uh, if, you, if you want to figure out a sub 1 plus a sub 5 plus a sub 9 and so on, what you can do is you can take uh, 1 over 4 times uh, the sum over all fourths root of unity of z inverse times f of z. And so this will be equal to 1 fourth times 1 inverse f of 1 plus i inverse f of i uh, plus negative 1 inverse f of negative 1 plus uh, negative i inverse negative i. And so this whole expression is just the sum, and this will come out to be a1 plus a5 plus a9, and so on. Or if you have negative coefficients, then you may also get a a negative 3, a negative 7, and so on, so long as your series converges. Uh, yeah, so that's all for this video. That's just an introduction to um, the uh, roots of unity filter uh, method for solving sums.